Can you give me a bit about Starlink and how yeah. the tech works? Because somebody yeah. I was speaking to, uh, I don't know if you know this company called Meter out of San Francisco. Uh, they're trying to replace network engineers. But don't know, no. um, so he was telling me about how in densely populated areas, Starlink works differently than it might be in a place with not as many people. Can you explain yeah. how it works? Yeah, so Starlink, um, there's several thousand satellites in low Earth orbit, and they're moving around 25 times the speed of sound um, in these, you know, they're zipping around the Earth, basically. And um, they're, uh, they're at, at an altitude of about 550 kilometers, mm -hmm. um, which is called you know, generally low Earth orbit. Um, because they're, they're at low Earth orbit, they're, um, the latency is is low, like the, the distance, because the distance is, is not that far compared to a geostationary satellite at uh, 36,000 kilometers. Um, so you've, you've got um, thousands of satellites providing uh, low latency, high speed internet uh, th throughout the world, and um, and they are interconnected as well. So there's, there are laser, laser links between the satellites, so it forms sort of a, a laser mesh so that the, if, if, let's say, uh, fi let's say if, if cables are damaged or cut, like fiber cables, the satellites can communicate between each other um, and provide connectivity uh, even if uh, there's, there's a, uh, the cables are cut. So, for example, when the Red Sea cables w were cut, uh, I think a few months ago, mm -hmm. The satellite, the, the, the Sonic satellite network continued to function without a hitch. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's particularly helpful for disaster areas. So if, but if an area has been hit with uh, some kind of natural disaster, floods or fires or uh, earthquakes, that, that tends to damage the, the ground infrastructure. Uh, but the Starlink satellites still work. So, um, and generally, when, whenever there's some sort of natural disaster somewhere, we, we always provide people with free Starlink uh, internet connectivity it help <laughs> that would be wrong um, so so that's it's 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 a very robust system it's it's complementary to ground systems because uh, the satellite beams um, work best in uh, sparsely populated areas mm -hmm. um, but bec uh, because you, you've got a, you've got a satellite beam it's a pretty big beam so you have a, and you have a fixed number of users per beam so uh, it tends to be very complementary to the ground-based cellular systems because those are those are very good in cities because you've got these cell towers that are you know only mm -hmm. a, a kilometer apart type of thing, but, uh, but 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 cell towers tend to be inefficient in the countryside. So in in uh, rural rural areas is where you tend to have the worst internet because uh, it's very very expensive, difficult to lay to do all these do all the fiber optic cables. Uh, or to have um, high bandwidth cellular towers. So Starlink is very complementary to the existing telecom companies. Um, it, it basically tends to serve the, serve the least served, which I think is, is good. Um, that's, um, Will that change tomorrow? Like today, as you explained, the, the beam is quite broad and mm -hmm. it can't work in a densely populated area with high buildings maybe. But can that change and tomorrow it becomes really efficient in a densely populated city where it is competitive with the local network providers? It, it, it's unfortunately, the, the, so the, the physics don't allow for that. So mm. we're too far away. Um, so at, at 550 kilometers, and even if we try to reduce it, which about as low as we can go is about 350 kilometers, still very far away. You, you've, you've just, you can think of like a, like a flashlight, which is, it's, you know that flashlight's got a cone, and and, and that that cone is is coming at, you know, today 550 kilometers. In the future, we'll try to get down to 350 kilometers. But we can't be something that's one kilometer away. Which the cell tower physics is not on our side here. Right. So it's not it's not physically possible for us for Starlink to serve uh, densely populated cities. Like you can serve a little bit, maybe one percent of the population. And sometimes people get you know even in in crowded cities, there might be, you know, no fiber link up their road. Like sometimes if somebody's on a cul-de-sac or something or in a, a place in, in cities, there's sometimes underserved areas for random reasons. And so Starlink can serve, like I said, maybe 1% or 2% of, of, of a 
densely populated city. Um, but it can be much more effective in, like I said, in rural areas where the internet connection is much worse. And often people either have sometimes no access to internet or it's extremely expensive or the quality is not very good.